So welcome back. In this part of the lecture, we want to kind of go back to this question and try to answer it. Does there exist a matrix M such that we can satisfy this particular relationship? And what we have to do is we take advantage of the fact that T is a linear transformation. Because if we take T and we evaluate it at X, what we could instead do is first take the X and rewrite it in terms of the basis elements. So we're rewriting it in terms of the basis elements. And then by the properties of the linear transformation, this is the same thing as R1 time, uh, times wherever the first basis element gets sent, all the way over to Rn times Tbn. Okay, where the last element gets sent to. So this is what Tx looks like. And then Tx of C, all right, we're gonna take this guy and we wanna write it in terms of the C coordinate here. Well, this guy here is now going to be equal to, and I'll write it like this. Okay, so we were writing, we wanna figure out what Tx was with respect to the C coordinates. Well, we could rewrite it in this particular form right here. But another way to think about this is we can actually factor out all the coefficients. So we actually have, oh, yeah, so we can rewrite this as T1, sorry, not T1, R1 times the C coordinate of B1 plus R2 times where the B coordinate gets sent by a T and then its C coordinate and so on. It's Cn a lot of parentheses going on here. And then what we want to notice here, and hopefully I left myself enough room to do this, is that this guy here is the same thing as taking a matrix, because these guys are all uh, vectors right here. You're taking a matrix where this is the first column, where this C coordinate is the second column, and so on. And this gives me T, B, N. That's my last column times the vector R1 up to R, N. Okay. And what you want to notice here is that this last little part right here, the R1 through R, N, is actually the B coordinate of the X. Right. So this is equal to the B coordinate of the X. So I'm going to draw a picture here in a second. But the the takeaway here is that you're taking your x, you're sticking in your function, and then you get this value. So then you want to find the c coordinate. Now the c coordinate is that map itself is a linear transformation, so that's why you can break it down into understanding where does this vector get sent, where uh, each of these tbis get sent, and you can pull out the ris, and then you can rewrite this in terms of uh, a matrix, this is a matrix, times the R1 through Rn. And the R1 through the Rn are coming from the original X. So let me make me a little bit more precise. We'll add a definition here. So the matrix T relative to the basis B and C is the matrix that you get by taking the first basis element of B, sticking it into your function and writing it with respect to the, figuring out the C coordinate, and that becomes your first column. And then you repeat this process to find the remaining columns. So you get T, B, N, C. And maybe it's, it's useful to note that what you're getting here is you're getting an M by N matrix. Right. It's clear that you're getting n columns because you have, uh, I've actually written out the n columns here. And the fact that you're getting m rows is because whenever you find the C coordinate uh, of a particular element, you're getting an element in R, M. So there's a lot of things floating around here and it gets a little complicated because there's a lot of notation, but let me give you an example. So let's go to our example of differentiation. So we have a map going from P2 to P1 which takes a polynomial degree two and it takes its derivative, right? So let's kind of just track through where some of these things would go. So the polynomial a0, a1t, 
plus A2T squared, it gets mapped over to the polynomial A1 plus 2A2T. Now, how do we figure out what it gets sent to down here? Well, the B coordinate, because we're using the standard basis of P2, this guy here just gets sent to the tuple in R3, where uh, the first, where the coordinates correspond to the coefficients. So that's what's happening over here. And then the same thing happens over here. So if we write this guy with respect to the basis for P, uh, for P1, you're going to get a vector of the form A1, 2A2. So what we want to know is what is the ma matrix M that we would go from here that takes a vector of this form and maps it over to this vector over here in R2. And so I've started some of the work over here. Okay, so we're trying to find the matrix M uh, relative to the bases B and C. So what we need to do is first figure out, start with all the basis elements of the P2, stick them into our function. So that's the first part. So we're going to stick our first basis element in, which is one. We stick it into our function. So we're differentiating one and we get, we're going to get zero. Then we take T, we stick it into our function. We differentiate it, we get one. And when we stick T squared into our function, we get two T. Then what we need to do is figure, notice that this guy here is zero plus zero T. This guy here is one plus zero T. And this guy here is zero plus two T. So what I'm doing here is now I'm trying to write it in terms of the basis of C. So this implies that T one with respect, with respect to the basis C, it's these coefficients I want to pull off, zero and zero. So this is zero, zero. Okay. Now let's do T, T with respect to the basis C. By, uh, in terms of the basis of P2, it's one and zero. So that gives me the vector one, zero. And then the last guy here, T, T squared, C. These are the coefficients I need, 0 and t, so I have 0 and, not t, 0 and 2, and so I get my element 0 and 2. Okay, so then what I put all these pieces together, this guy becomes my first column, this guy, 1, 0, becomes my second column, and 0, 2 becomes my last column. Right, so that gives us my matrix M. So I think it would help to see what's happening with respect to this picture if I do a very specific example so you can track what's going on. So let's say I start with 17 plus 3t plus 2t squared. So I'm starting with something over here and let's look at it where it gets sent over here. So this is a very simple calculus problem. Even I can do this. So this gets sent to 3 plus 24t. That's just a standard differentiation. Okay. Now what we're going to do is take, look at this part. We're going to take this polynomial and map it to R3 with respect to its basis, right? So this polynomial would get mapped to 17, 3, and 12. That's the vector here. Now I want to use the matrix M that I found to map over to R2. So I'm going to take this guy here, this vector, and I'm going to map it over so 0, 1, 0 by multiplying by the matrix M. And then, so I have 17, 3, and 12. And when I multiply that out, I end up with 3, 24. But notice that when you multiply it by M, you get 3, 24. And that vector is exactly what you would get if you were to take this polynomial and you map it down to its coordinate with respect to the C basis, right? Because the three is telling you the uh, 
a constant coefficient and the 24 is telling you the coefficient of 24. So we, we have exactly what we wanted that this matrix here is, is the piece at the bottom that would allow us to figure out what the coefficients are over here. So there's a lot going on here and maybe go back to my first picture. The idea is you have some sort of transformation you can bump everything down using, once you fix the basis, you can write everything in terms of its basis and you can find then a map that corresponds to the map T upstairs. So really you're kind of like just linear transformations. One way to think about it is it's really determined by how you're changing your coefficients. And so what we're doing is we're just keeping track of the coefficients and the matrix M is keeping track of how the coefficients change. So I hope this example really illustrates what we're doing. And in the next part, uh, in a minute, we'll talk about how diagonalization comes into play.